you haven't tasted rice until you taste Auntie Flo's Kilombero rice. It brings out the flavor and taste in every meal. It's priced right as well. $4 for 2 kgs, $10 for 5 kgs and $100 for 50 kgs. Available at Eastgate Market Shopping Center in Harare and Fidelity Life Center in Bulawayo. Or simply WhatsApp us on the numbers on screen now. Auntie Flo's Kilombero Rice. Delicious. Tasty. Mouth-watering. They say beauty is skin deep. Well, at Ice and D Beauty Store, we provide skin products specifically tailored to repair any type of skin and blemishes. From moisturizers, sheer butter, knuckle remover, body lotions, spot correctors, and a whole lot more. We have stores and representatives right around the globe. Contact any of our representatives nearest to you. For more information, contact Ison D. Glowing Store. Hello guys, my name is DJ Ola7 Owen. We're Kwama Dodo here on this pod, your favorite segment uh, on your number one podcast show in the land. The Ola7 Podcast Show. We are here. <laughs> and tonight I'm joined by guys. Okay, let me just take it easy. <laughs> on this platform, we host business people, politicians, soccer stars, you know, all the public figures. And tonight, I'm hosting a different, you know, a persona altogether. I'm talking about uh, Brooke, Brooke Jackson. So it's Brooke, Brooke. Exactly. It Brooke, makes Brooke no Jackson. sense. Yes. It, it makes no sense. No. But hello, Ola. How are you, Brooke? <laughs> thank you for having me. I'm excited for oh, this. Oh, thank you so much for coming. <laughs> you know, born on the 26th of the, um, you know, uh, July 20, exactly. 2002. You know, and uh, here you are, exactly. shining star, would doing have, wonders. Would have never thought, eh? Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy for you, uh, <laughs> thank Brooke. Thank you. Thank so, you. welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So, your name is Brooke, Brooke Jackson, okay? Spelled differently, but pronounced mm -hmm. the same, you know, kind of interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I asked your parents why they give you that name? I often ask and they can never give me an answer. All I say when people ask me why did they call you that, all I say is they're crazy. <laughs> they're crazy. <laughs> they're mad. <laughs> so when, they, when, when, you, when you tell them that uh, you are crazy, what do, what do they say? They say, yeah, we are crazy. Oh. That's why you're crazy. <laughs> so you are also crazy. I'm also crazy. Oh, I see. Now it makes <laughs> sense. Okay. So, you know, um, you were born and bred here in Arare, in yes. New Lands, right? Indeed. Yeah. You went to GCPT primary school and secondary school yes. can you tell us you know uh, uh, more uh, a bit about your you know your background your upbringing mm -hmm. your end life yes so I was born and raised in Zimbabwe I've lived here with my family I have two sisters two older sisters so basically three moms because if you also have siblings and two sisters you'll know that it's having to deal with three moms literally yes, yes. Um, but a are very your, your, your older sisters yes mm -hmm. 27 and 26 okay yes but a very blessed upbringing, love my family and wouldn't wouldn't want any other family mm. and went to school at Chisapiti. My sisters also went to school there and I then carried on to beauty therapy school. So I studied in Cape Town and I also then studied online fashion design, which was based in London. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what motivated you um, to get into fashion? I feel that... I don't know. I just have my own sense of style and my own sense of fashion. And I think that that's what made me really want to do like my, so my own dresses, so mm -hmm. my own, so my like speciality is evening gowns. Evening yeah, gowns. Yeah, I love okay. making, especially in silk. Mm -hmm. So that, that's just what I love. I love the way it looks. I love the way it flows. And I just mm -hmm. thought, also because of my length, like I'm so tall. Yes. That in most How shops. How many centimeters? 183. 183, yeah. that's your height? Yes. And on top of that, you put on heels? Heels, have to. I don't have a choice. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> to make it like two meters? <laughs> yeah. But I also think because whenever I used to go and like shop in the shops, mm -hmm. all dresses never used to fit me, mm -hmm. especially evening gowns. Mm -hmm. So I thought, let me start making my own. And How is it uh, so far? You know, the fashion and design? Yeah. yeah. So I'm not fully, fully involved. I just make some things for myself here mm -hmm. and there when I have free time. Oh, yeah. Um, but I'm... 
I'm getting somewhere soon. So when you were in high school, were you into fashion and design? Or yes, it... yes. I studied oh. fashion and design at school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's also what made me push push with it. All right. So it. how supportive, um, I mean, has been your family in your journey? Very, very supportive. Mm-hmm. They've been my number one fans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is nice. They were all at the Miss Universe um, pageant where I won. And I looked at them in the crowd and I was like, what? And they were also like, what? Exactly. <laughs> um, and then my mum came with me to Miss Universe. Wow. So that was very cool. Wow. Yeah. That was big, man. I know, that was very big. cool. So in 2022, you signed uh, with the Cape Town Modeling uh, Talent Agents. Yes. Uh, Boss Model South Africa. Yes. You know, how did you get that deal? So I was scouted. I was scouted in about 2016 in Joburg. I was in a shop and a lady came up to me and said, are you a model? And I said, no, I'm still at school. And she said, okay, well, he has my card. When you are leaving school and ready to, you know, go to university, let us know if you are coming to South Africa. Mm -hmm. And then I did. And then I signed with them. So that was very cool. Um, They're a very big agency. Mm -hmm. And I did a few modeling jobs in Cape Town. I went to Turkey. I went to London Fashion Week mm. through them. So they gave me lots of opportunities. So they opened more doors for you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So what inspired you, Brooke, you know, um, uh, to pursue a career in pageantry and uh, complete, you know, uh, compete with, uh, for the Miss yeah. Universe? Yeah. So funny story, actually. I've mm. never been involved in pageants. I've obviously been well, 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 was doing high end and commercial modeling, mm-hmm. which is very different to pageant modeling. Like yeah. it's complete different. Um, and I was working here. I was actually working. I still work at Ridgeway at a beauty salon mm-hmm. and a gentleman walked in and he was asking me a few questions with another lady. Like she was asking me questions on the products I offer and the treatments I do. And mid sentence, he just said to me, do you have a piece of paper? So I thought, what? This is, mm-hmm. this is weird. Yeah. So I gave him a piece of paper and he wrote on it and he passed it back to me and he said, answer this question. Mm-hmm. And it said, what do you find most unique about Zimbabwe? Wow. And my mom was getting That's her, what he wrote on that piece yeah. of paper. Yeah. Wow. And that's literally like what happens at Miss Universe. You, uh-huh. you read from a piece of paper. Yes, so yes. he was obviously testing me to see oh, how I would answer. Yes, yes. And I answered, and my mom was getting her toes done, mm. like her nails done. And I looked at her and I also said, this is so, and she was also like, exactly. What's happening? Yeah. And I answered and I said, the people. Mm-hmm. And he said, give me more. And I said, the people of Zim are so unique. Like you'll never come across anybody mm-hmm. like a Zimbabwean. Yes. And he said, okay, please get a hold of this number. And he wrote down a number and he didn't tell me why. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the day, I phoned the number and I said, hi, you don't know me. I don't know you, but mm-hmm. a gentleman left me your number and I have no idea why. And that person on the other side of the phone call was Tendai Honda, who is mm-hmm. the director of the organization. Yes. So she said, we would like for you to audition because that guy sees potential in you. Wow. So they were obviously friends. Wow. Oh, they were yes, friends. So they yes. Were, yes. That's, so he obviously phoned her and said, I've just told somebody that like, I think she has potential. Uh-huh. So then I entered, I auditioned and then I but was... What is it that he saw in you? I don't know. No, this is what I asked myself. Yeah. I think it's, he maybe saw how good... I am with people and how I love people. Yes. And I think my answer as well, because at the end of the day, I was representing every single Zimbabwean. Mm-hmm. Like I was representing the whole country. Yes. So when I said the most unique thing I find about Zim mm-hmm. are the people, well, I would be representing the people wow. at the end of yes. the day. So wow. I think, mm. yeah. And I understand Miss Universe Zimbabwe was your first time, uh, I mean, uh, competing. Yes. Can you shed, um, I mean, uh, a bit more light on that one, your journey to becoming Miss Universe Zimbabwe Mm -hmm. and experiences, you know, that led you to this uh, moment. So we obviously had boot camp for a week with myself and 12 other girls. We stayed at Imba Matombo and yeah, I made really nice friends. It was really nice to get to know each other, you know, learning about each other on different levels. Mm -hmm. We each have different backgrounds and we've all come from different families, Mm -hmm. you know, and we different people. So it was, it was very cool to learn about people and make friends. Mm -hmm. Um, I went into the pageant. Obviously I really didn't, I thought, I thought to myself, because this this is my first pageant, it's okay. Like it's fine if you don't win, like you, Mm -hmm. you probably won't win because it's your first time. Mm -hmm. So I think something that, that I really did learn is that like take every opportunity Mm -hmm. that comes your way because Mm -hmm. Even if you think you you won't get it, that's the most likely chance you will get it mm-hmm. because you're not like thinking about it the whole time. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, I made made really That's nice awful. friends. That was my favorite part. <laughs> and you know, when you were audi- when you auditioned for that, uh, I mean, Miss University, um, what were your expectations? When I went to do the first room, yes, I not I didn't expect anything. Like I really didn't overthink or think about it. I was just <laughs> like, okay, when you open these doors, mm-hmm. just. Be yourself. Mm-hmm. That's that's truly how it was and how I was. Being yourself. Yeah, I think it's very important. One would want to know, can you share with us uh, your journey to becoming Miss Universe Zimbabwe and the experiences, you know, that shaped you along the way? Didn't we just answer that? Mm. Yeah, you <laughs> did, but I want to, you know, I wanted to go deeper. Um, it's a deep question. Eh? Yes. I'm not a deep person. That's why. That's why you see <laughs> Well, definitely the thing, the first thing that I said is that take every opportunity. Yes. So that's something I've learned is that mm-hmm. just grab anything that comes your way. Mm-hmm. And one really big thing that I learned is that like your color does not define you. Yes. So no matter what color you are, you mm-hmm. can do whatever you want to do in yes. life, even though like there might be some sort of discrimination, mm-hmm. we are striving for no discrimination. Mm. So it's, it was nice to know that like our country is celebrating diversity and inclusivity, which I think is very important. Um, during the process, yes. did you face any challenges of oh, discrimination or racism? A lot. Yeah? <laughs> a lot. What happened? But it's part of a journey, you know, mm-hmm. like you're not going to ever make everybody happy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did receive a lot of backlash. Mm-hmm. And what's Locally actually... here in Zimbabwe? No, what's funny is that it mainly wasn't Zimbabweans. Mm. It was people like international people, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think because they've never come to our continent, let alone our country. And they've never seen that like there is diverse people. Yes. Um, So yeah, I did receive a lot of, I did get a lot of backlash. How did you then manage to overcome that? I just, you know, I woke up on like the second day because there was, I was posted. So I didn't even know about this, but you know, the shade room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was posted on that. And people from that post went mad. Like mm. I was getting messages in my inbox, like threatening me and my family. Oh. And it was, yeah, it was a lot. But I just, I didn't reply. I didn't actually open most exactly. of them. Exactly. I didn't read comments. Mm-hmm. But what I knew deep down is that I am a Zimbabwean and mm-hmm. nobody can take that away from exactly. me. Like I am born and raised. My family mm-hmm. is, we generations have lived mm-hmm. here. And I wouldn't want to represent any other country mm-hmm. other than my own. Yeah. So I think when you know who you are, mm-hmm. then it's then you can't let anyone really knock you down. I like that. On September 16, you were crowned Miss Universe Zimbabwe. Yes. Okay, tell me when your name was announced, oh. uh, Brooke, you know, <laughs> what was the first thing that came to your mind? Honestly, it's like all a blur. I feel like I was all numb in that yeah. moment because it all happened so quickly as mm-hmm. well. Like it goes from top 12 to top six, then top four, then top three, then yes. top two. Mm. But when they said my name... I was, I was truly shocked. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> is this real? And I looked at my family in the crowd and they were also all like, is this real? You're not even expecting that. No, no. Mm. I think also because I, I feel like in life you must always leave room for disappointment. Very true. So when I entered the competition, I obviously, you enter it to win. Um, but I did say to myself, don't be upset if you don't get chosen. Like, just leave a bit of room for disappointment. And mm-hmm. so... I had left that room and when I did win, it was like... Mm, exactly. Crazy. 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 So you received a cash prize of 10,000 US dollars, you know, yes. from uh, Style by Mini. Yes. Uh, after being crowned Miss Universe Zimbabwe. What did you use that money for? So I was given 5,000. Mm-hmm. The other five um, went to the other winners. Okay. The second runner-ups. Oh, okay. So you like it was a share. You yes. Share. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We share. Um, I haven't done anything with it yet. I'm still deciding because I'm still thinking about things to obviously start my career mm-hmm. and I obviously need a bit of a leg up. So mm-hmm. I've kept it for a bit wow. and then I'll decide. Wow. Yeah. So you're rich now. Mm, rich, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> One day, that's the goal. They're keeping that's our goal. I mean, that's, that's a, I mean a lot of money. Uh, yeah. yeah, a lot of money, definitely. Yeah. But it's, a, it's only worth when you use it really. Mm-hmm. Because now yes. it's just sitting. Mm. But I have to be, I'm the worst spender. I'll mm. spend it like for on a wardrobe, which is ridiculous. So I need to be careful with it. 
<laughs> and I need to be careful. So after your crowning, you know, you took to social media, you know, where you posted this and I caught, you said, I have gained this crown for our beautiful country mm-hmm. to love and save our people, to represent Zimbabwe internationally and to show the world the uniqueness of Zimbabwe and the Zimbabweans. Mm-hmm. Close quote. In what ways can beauty uh, pigeons uh, contribute to promoting cultural diversity and inclusivity? I think basically what's just happened with me winning. Like I am representing, I obviously am a minority of the country, but it is celebrating cult, like diversity, which I think is the main point of mm-hmm. the significance of beauty pageants is, mm-hmm. is that you can be of any color if you've been born and raised in that country, if you have a passport from that country, mm-hmm. you are allowed to represent it. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's, that's the main point. So profound. Yeah. <laughs> and soon after that, you had a major task, I mean, ahead of you. At the Miss Universe pageant, how did you prepare for the Miss Universe competition? <laughs> My gosh. So it yeah. was a month. Yeah. From the moment I was crowned Miss Sim, I had a month to prepare. I think it was... It was mainly getting physically and mentally prepared. So physically meaning your wardrobe. You have to have like a whole new wardrobe Mm -hmm. to go. Mm -hmm. So that was crazy because it's like you don't have a lot of time, you know. You don't have a lot of, especially me as a designer, I would have wanted to go with all of my own designs, but I didn't have, there was just no time to Mm -hmm. do it. Mm So we saw some outfits, which was really nice. And I locally also- Locally or internationally? Um, locally and internationally. Mm-hmm. I got a few stuff from South Africa, but okay. mainly locally. Mm-hmm. Um, like my evening gowns were all from Zagushka. Oh. Yeah, shout out to him. Wow. He's amazing. And yeah. Ivory Tribe, Ivory Tribe, Jasper, mm-hmm. he did my national outfit. So yes. taking In, Zimbabwe uh, the whole like way. On point. Yeah, well, tried. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then just mentally, like preparing yourself, you have mm-hmm. to- it's difficult. Like you're going onto a stage with 89 other women and it's, yes. yeah. 89. Yeah. Wow. And they've all been doing this for like yes. their whole lives. Oh, oh. It, it, it was your first time. Yeah. So you have to just like separate yourself from them and mm-hmm. say like, and we, they've were been. Were you not scared? Were you not nervous? No, but I'm a type of person who never gets like nervous or scared or okay. like, um, I don't feel that. <laughs> oh, <I laughs> Unless a lion or something is chasing me, then it's different. <laughs> a shumba. <laughs> a shumba, yes. Shumba is a tactic name as well. <laughs> yeah, so unfortunately, you know, you failed to make it into the top 20 finalists. Yes. Um, but you made it into the Miss Universe, um, you know, Voice for Change. Yes. Uh, silver finalist top 10. Yes. Congratulations, by Thank the way. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brooke, uh, how has uh, your experience in the Voice for Change competition influenced your personal views, mm-hmm. you know, on um, on the role of beauty uh, queens yeah. in advocating for social uh, societal uh, transformation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think the good thing about a voice for change and getting into the top ten is that it's you are chosen based on what you're talking about for your country. Mm-hmm. You base you talk you are chosen on what you're trying to change, like using your voice to change something. Whereas you know, making top 20 is mainly more about the way you look, the way you walk, all of that. So it's it's all about image. It's not really about what you're saying and what you're trying to change. Yeah. So to me, it was a significant win for myself and for our country mm-hmm. because it's I was talking about our country. And yeah. I'm not sure if you saw my Voice for Change video of my advocacy with the woman in the informal sector and the mm-hmm. financial inclusion mm-hmm. and the financial literacy. So that's what... Um, I was talking about and mm-hmm. using my voice to try and change. And yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm very grateful that I made it into top 10 voice for change. Cause yes, that's, yes. that's just like a win for us. You Amazing. Know? Yeah. And are there any, you know, memorable moments or accomplishments that I um, mean stand out in your Miss Universe journey? Um, the whole, everything really, like it's an experience that not many people get to do or to experience. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a small percentage of people that get to do it. So I yeah. think every step of the way was a learning curve and mm-hmm. something new, something different. Yeah. Um, but I think just like being in a country with 89 girls, like you all together, it's mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah. Like you are literally like traveling around this country and you are like learning about each other. It's just, it's like something I would have never thought I would mm-hmm. have ever mm-hmm. done in my life. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, you know what, Brooke? After that, after soon after your crowning, as uh, I mean, uh, after your crowning, social media went ablaze. You know, uh, with some saying you didn't deserve that crown. Yes. And how did you take that? And what? Um, how did you overcome that? I think, like I said before, is that I know who I am, and I didn't steal the crown from anybody. Yes. Like that's ridiculous it's crazy um i gained the crown yeah. i didn't steal it from everyone people mm -hmm. the judges and everyone obviously s said that and saw that i was the best representative mm -hmm. and so they chose me based on that not based on anything else mm. you're like no guys i yeah. deserve it yeah well like obviously don't be jealous yeah <laughs> don't be jealous <laughs> but obviously I, i haven't been in pageants for long but i worked hard at the boot camp mm -hmm. like we would train We would go to sleep every day at two and we would wake up at five for mm. gym and then we would train yeah. like walking training mm -hmm. and it was tiresome like it was it was hard work but mm. but we pushed through yeah sure as us zimbabweans do hey <laughs> <laughs> so do you follow social media that much and uh, what is your policy on social media you know as far as your work is uh, is concerned i think social media is important mm -hmm. i think people do abuse it sometimes You know, it's a form of bullying as well, yes, which is no yes. good. Um, but I think it's it's great. It's good to get your brand out there. It's good to get you as a person out there. It's it's also good to connect. Mm -hmm. So I think there's ways that social media is an ad like mm -hmm. good and ways that it's bad. It yeah. just depends on the people mm -hmm. who use it, mm -hmm. whether you're going to use it in a good way or in a bad way. way. Yeah. Of so yeah. How do you deal with um, trolls? I don't listen. Like don't listen. no. But I, but like this, what I'm saying, I think this is just me as a person. Mm -hmm. I don't, I think I've got a thick skin, mm -hmm. but, but all Zimbabweans do have a thick skin, right? Yeah. Like. Not all of them. Majority. I'm not suffering, I mean, like, look, yeah, but the, like there's, you know, there's people out there who don't have a life that we live. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. that's something that yeah, sure. isn't like it's, they've, they've got thick skin and they get through it. They mm -hmm. find ways to survive. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's just enough. I do understand that people suffer depression and mental illness. Yes. Um, but then there's also ways to get help, you know, mm -hmm. for that. Because some people just throw shit at you, even you know, yeah. on social media, people are like, ah, you know what, yeah, yeah you're nothing. Yeah. Ah, people are like, hey, yeah. demoralizing you, mm. demotivating you. So each time you go like on social media, be like, mm, yeah. should I go on? Should I continue? Or I should yeah. just stop whatever that I'm doing right now? Because, you know, It's, it's, it's hard. It's not easy to, no, to do hard. Trolls yeah. on social media. I think it's also you've got to realize that in life, not everyone is going to like you. Yes, sure. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. there's the famous, famous people mm -hmm. who, peop who their fans or people who dislike them, there's people who don't like them, mm -hmm. even though they are probably the most amazing person yes. or whatever they do is the best job mm -hmm. ever. Yeah. But there's always going to be people who don't, like you and there's yes. going to be people who love you mm. and then there's going to be people who just don't care yes so i think that's so deeply ingrained in me from a really young age like my dad has always taught me that yes. and so i think that's how i deal with it is that i'm like i see comments that say you don't deserve it yeah. or you go away you stole the crown or whatever <laughs> and then there's comments which say we love you you deserve this like yes. you're amazing yeah. so it's 50, 50. There's always a balance. Mm, yeah. yeah. So let's talk about music. Who is your favorite musician here in Zimbabwe? I've got a few. My 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 main one who I've been listening to a lot at the moment is Tammy Moyo. Tammy Moyo. Yeah. Tammy. It's Tammy. She's yeah, like yeah, yeah. on my top top. Kwandi Nova. Hey. Oh, you know this song? Yeah. <laughs> ah, maybe you just sing it no, for me. No, no. Sing it for me a bit. I can't sing. Huh? Ah, Diskuda. Ah. <laughs> ah, Diskuda. Ah. I can't sing. She can sing for us. Uh -huh. I'll listen. I'll listen. Tell me more, yo. Yeah. Who else? Um, obviously, Ja. Mm -hmm. Ja? Yeah. Oh, Ja? Ja? You said Ja or you said what? Uh, ja? Ja Preza. Ja Preza. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Why are you saying like that? No, no, no. <laughs> Did I pronounce it wrong? No, Ja. Ja. ja that's fine. It's okay, Ja. Ja Preza. Oh, I thought it was Ja Preza. Ja. Oh, I've been wrong my whole life. Yeah, it's Ja. It's like when people pronounce my name wrong. It's the same I thing. <laughs> they, 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 they pronounce it wrong. Brooke, Brooke Brack Jackson. Oh, Brooke Brack. It's yeah. Brooke Brooke. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Ja Preza. 
Jabraiser. Okay, there you go. Exactly, Jabraiser. And Mukudze, his name is Mukudze Mukombe. You know that? His no? name. Yeah, his real name is Mukudze Mukombe. What? I didn't know. Mukudze. So does he changed all his social media and everything? Yeah. On social media, just yes, uses uh, Jabraiser. Oh. But uh, his real name is Mukudze Mukombe. I didn't know. You didn't know. Mm-mm. Now you know. Now I know. See, hey. I learn something so, every day. What's the name again? Ja Praise. No, no, no. Do you know? Oh, what did they say? <laughs> oh. Mukudze Mukombe. Oh. Mukudze Mukombe. Well done. Mukudze Mukombe. Well done. I hope he watches this. <laughs> of course, he's a big fan of the show. Why not? He's a big fan. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, those two are like my top uh-huh. local artists. Okay. Um, Gemma, obviously. Gemma. Gemma. Yeah. She's good as well. I like Very uh, good. the one Maita Basa Baba. Yeah. I, I, the best. I love that and one. Di, di chata risa exactly. Wangu. Eh? So that one. <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't say. No, you're trying. I can't you're say. You're trying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so bad. on September 18, 2023, uh, Brooke, uh, which was soon after your crowning, Ish. you said Sweeting. and I caught. Yes. I want to be an example of grace, understanding, and inspiration to the youth of Zimbabwe to instill the spirit of Ubuntu and know that together we are strong and anything in life is possible. Mm-hmm. Close quote. So how do you plan to use your platform, you know, to address important issues and make a positive impact? I think obviously with my advocacy, my advocacy work, um, pushing for the financial inclusion and the financial literacy, I want to really make an impact in women in that sector because I feel like people in Zim are so talented mm-hmm. um, and traditionally the women are left behind, yeah. you know, that's like mm-hmm. how it usually happens and they're left at home to look after the kids and yes. they don't really have that leg up to do mm-hmm. what they want to do mm-hmm. and so I want them to know that they can. Mm-hmm. Um, they just need, you know, to learn that they can get the financial inclusion they mm-hmm. they just need to be financial literate yeah, yeah. um and that then all their dreams can one day come true mm-hmm. and that they they can pursue their dreams mm-hmm. for me that's really important there's nothing worse than you being a person and really wanting to do something in life but not having that leg up mm-hmm. to do it yeah so that's something that i'm really trying to push because everyone deserves a good life really mm-hmm. And, uh, you know... It's hot, yeah, eh? yeah, yeah, it's hot. You know, it's, um, it's like summertime. It's these lights. <laughs> it's too hot. Maybe. I'm sweating. <laughs> so I'll give you aircon just now. So uh, can you tell us about um, your advocacy and any causes, you know, that uh, are particularly close to your heart? So the financial inclusion. So women in the informal sector. Mm-hmm. Well, not only just women, obviously everyone um, in the informal sector have... Well, let me, let me rephrase. The less privileged yeah. have a very special place in my heart. Mm-hmm. Like I've always done what I can to help wherever I can. Yeah. Um, and I feel that now I have this platform, I really can do what I want to do. Yeah. Um, so I'm, like I said, I'm going to try and push for the financial literacy and mm-hmm. financial inclusion for people in the informal sector. How do you envision, uh, in, envision using this uh, Miss Universe platform to promote diversity and inclusion on a global scale. Me winning. Like it's literally, that in itself is promoting diversity and inclusion because like I said, I am a minority of the country, but I did win Miss Zimbabwe. And so it's it's showing that whatever you want to do in life, you can do it. You're not mm-hmm. judged or discriminated based on your color. Yeah. It's not only just your color, it's your age, it's your gender, it's mm-hmm. your background, it's your culture, it's, it's everything. Mm-hmm. So I think just using my voice really and I think people just seeing that what has happened with me winning explains it itself, mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. you can do what you want to do. Awesome. Uh, you know, what are your goals and aspirations for the future, both within and beyond the realm of, uh, you know, beauty pageants? Mm-hmm. I'm still still thinking. <laughs> I still don't know. But I think my end end goal is one day owning my own, well, having my own foundation. So okay. like my own orphanage. So they call um, it uh, Brook Foundation? Hopefully. Wow. Um, to have that obviously in Zim and then to also have my own salon and mm-hmm. fashion line. Mm. That's 
that's one of my those are a few of my goals. Wow, that's yeah. big. Those are big goals. Yeah, big goals. Have to work hard. So, in a question and answer segment uh, during the Miss Universe Zimbabwe uh, pigeons uh, boot camp, mm-hmm. um, you said, and I caught my biggest fear. Mm-hmm is not to have an impact on people's lives. Mm-hmm. Anybody who enters my life, um, I would like them to live inspired Healing, yeah. and transformed, mm-hmm. not by the way I look, but with what is inside my heart. Yeah. Close God. And then I literally, that's so, because I've only thought about it now. That was literally my answer. And then I got top 10 voice for change. Wow, you see? And it is like... That's crazy. I haven't thought of that. And in what <laughs> ways, uh, Brooke, are you plan to uh, do you plan to contribute uh, to your community and inspire others to make a difference? So you know what I've learned in life is that you don't always have to give something to make somebody happy. Mm-hmm. You have to make them feel valued. So whether that's communicating to mm-hmm. them, asking them how they are, asking them their name, and. I know for a fact that Mm -hmm. if you ask somebody how they are and how they're doing and just be kind and friendly, they will already leave you Mm. remembering you and feeling just lighthearted, you know, instead of meeting somebody who's not so nice Mm -hmm. and who Mm -hmm. doesn't really care about you, you'll leave not remembering them and thinking, ah, Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) futseke. So, yeah, that's, that's, what I really aspire to mm-hmm. be like, obviously. Uh, tell me, how do you balance the uh, responsibility of being Miss Universe Zimbabwe with your personal life and other commitments? Miss Universe Zim obviously comes first. Mm-hmm. Anything that I have to do under that, it comes first. Mm-hmm. So my social life and my work, obviously, I won't do whilst I'm Miss Zim. Well, obviously, I will. I will still be social, mm-hmm. but when I'm called to to do a duty or role, then I will drop everything and yes. and mania. Looking forward, how do you plan to continue your advocacy for change, you know, beyond the Miss Universe competition? So I'm not really allowed to say because yeah. it's still in, in like contract. Okay. Um, but one day I'll be able to tell you if it comes through. Mm-hmm. So. so it's big. Um, yeah. Wow. I think it will be big, yeah. preempt a bit. I will be partnering with like a very big corporate Mm -hmm. in which they work with the informal sector. Mm -hmm. And so they do financial inclusion and financial literacy Mm -hmm. with them. So I'll basically become a brand ambassador and then push my brand with their brand and work together. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, because people don't really know much about this. They do know about the court, like the, Mm -hmm. the organization, but it goes a lot deeper than yes. so if i'm able to use my voice for it then mm-hmm. we can push it together mm. That's, ah, yeah. ah, this is because big. like the informal sector and financial inclusion is very difficult to do alone mm-hmm. like it's very vast yes. it's huge so if i can't just you know be one person and say okay i want to keep donating or sp- or you know fundraising ten thousand dollars because it's it's just not feasible yes. it's not yeah, it's, it's, it's not possible mm-hmm. So rather go under a company who already does it and mm-hmm. push together. Oh, it's, it's, it's easier that way. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I see. Don't you think? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how has Brooke, uh, Brooke Jackson's uh, platform evolved and expanded since her involvement in Miss Universe? So I, it's actually crazy. Before I was crowned Miss Sim, I obviously didn't have a platform, mm-hmm. but like I said, my heart has always been with the less privileged. And then when I won, I was able to really make my platform Mm -hmm. a a platform. And so I did my first project in Wangi where I fundraised Mm $10,000. And I gave that towards the women who do the basket weaving, the beehive project and um, the animal, like the conservation. And that's been my first project. And then I obviously left for Miss Universe and then now I'm still figuring out Mm -hmm some things Mm. but that was my first big project and their lives are changing literally like they they now have everything to do what Mm. they want to do and what future aspirations or projects do you have you know um for for your post miss universe Mm -hmm. journey so opening my own foundation Foundation yeah definitely that yes and then the contract other companies Mm -hmm. and yeah 
basically that. Given uh, the diverse issues worldwide, which global challenge do you feel most compelled uh, to address as Miss Universe Zimbabwe? Please repeat. <laughs> Given the diverse issues, yes, you know, worldwide. Yeah. Uh, like which, the culture. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So which global ch- uh, uh, ch- challenge uh, do you feel most compelled uh, to address as Miss Universe Zimbabwe? I think promoting diversity and like celebrating inclusivity mm-hmm. and different cultures. I think that's, that's something that I would mm-hmm. do. Yeah. So to make sure that everyone is in, included. Yeah, I like to just show people and tell them that y- you can do anything you want to do in life. Mm-hmm. Like y- we all celebrate, well, we should. Our country, I think, is a step ahead of other countries in terms of diversity and celebrating mm-hmm. each other. Whereas other countries, I think they're still a little bit behind and mm-hmm. they still, mm-hmm. it's very like you have to be this color to do this job yes. or you have to be this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... Hopefully they'll hear us all the way from here. (laughs) (laughs) So still on that, how do you balance the expectations of a beauty queen uh, with your personal values and beliefs? I think they genuinely align. Like a beauty queen is is somebody that people should look up to and Mm -hmm. somebody that is genuine and has a true heart and is just a kind person. Mm -hmm. And those are things that I value as a person. Like I value being kind and I value being genuine, honest, and just yourself. Yeah, just being yourself. Yeah. Mm. So I think they align naturally. Yeah, naturally. (laughs) I I like it. So there have been cases where models, you know, are always uh, taken advantage of uh, by agents, you know. Yeah. Agents taking advantage of these models and whatnot. So we have have read about these in newspapers, you know, social media. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, have you ever uh, come across that uh, that situation? I've never. Hey, I've I've truly have never. But I also feel like I'm a very gullible person. Mm-hmm. Not gullible, but I'm naive. Like I, <laughs> I'm friends with everyone. Yes. But I've never been like it's never gone a step further or mm-hmm. anything. But I have heard that people have had problems with us, and mm-hmm. it's something that should be addressed, and it's yeah. something that people should be willing. Well, should be, you know, not afraid to talk about mm-hmm. because it's a serious issue. Yeah, yeah. very. Yeah. Uh, and uh, people will be like, okay, uh, let's have sex. Then I will give you the role or I'll give yeah, you Yeah, I think that is what happens, chance, to be honest. You know, no, that's never happened to me, ever. Mm-hmm. And if it did, yeesh, I'd be like, bye. Bye. I right away. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you, you want that chance. Yeah, I think. That, that opportunity. Yeah. Let it go. Definitely. Mm, I see. Are yeah. you married by the but way? But I think people, I think people get stuck. You know, they think like, this is my only chance if yes. I don't do this. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Being desperate. Yeah. So are you, are you, are you married? No. No. <laughs> no, I'm anytime not. Anytime soon? Not anytime soon. No, I'm still young. I'm still 21. 21? Yeah. So it's something that I don't, uh-huh. I don't want tomorrow, you do, know. Do you, do you have like a target where you say, okay, at, at least 25, 26 uh, I should be married. By so that. when I was younger, I always said, okay, when I'm 22, mm-hmm. I literally was like, when I'm 22, I want to be married and then I want to have kids at 24. And now uh-huh. I'm like, no, I want to live my life. You know, you only have one life and I don't want to look back and think, Eesh, <laughs> I wish I was. Yes. Now regretting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you've changed your mind from 22. Yeah. Well, I'm 22 next year. Yeah. So you've changed your mind. <laughs> yes. When did you change your mind? Mm, a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> So it's now to what age now? Ah, uh, no age. No age. No age. So it's anytime. I think, yeah. I think putting a limit on it is, it makes you then, like when you reach, say for example, mm-hmm. I say, okay, by 26 I must mm-hmm. be married. And then when I reach 26 and I'm not married, then I'm now going to be thinking, eesh. Mm, yeah, you now what? Giving you pre- yourself pressure. pressure. Yeah. I so see. when the time is right, the time is right. Mm. Yeah. So we've had uh, you know, people say that uh, if I get married, you know, what if I get pregnant and my body does not return to uh, normal, to not, yeah, to my normal shape and whatnot. What's the take on that? I think being pregnant is a beautiful thing, mm-hmm. and it's something that you know God gave us. Like this is what He wanted yeah. for us. Yeah. And so I think you just have to embrace your whole journey being pregnant because it's your body is changing and it's. Mm-hmm. You're about to, like you're giving, 
you have a child in you. Like yes. you, your body is going to change. Of course. So I think knowing that it's okay mm -hmm. that your body's changing. You are about to have a child. Like it's bound to happen. Mm -hmm. And then trying your best to get your body back to how it was. But I think some people's bodies don't go back. Mm -hmm. I think it just depends on the, t the type of genes you yeah, have. Yeah, you yeah. have, yes. yes. Um, but yeah, ish, it's scary, eh? Mm. <laughs> scary, I like that. And, uh, you know, most uh, uh, models and beauty patients, uh, contestants, like anyone else, you know, uh, may have various fears and concerns. Yeah. You see? So what are some of your, your fears? Well, my main fear is not making an impact on people's lives. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of my big things. But another fear is not doing like what I want to do in life. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you might not know, even if I might not know what it is now when I do know, I'm scared that like I might not do it and then I'm going to look back and think, mm -hmm. I should have done it. Yes. So I think that's... That's something that I'm like, <laughs> you could just got to follow every, every, anything that you want to do. You just got to follow it. Yes. Yeah. Very true. true. So when it comes to food, do you just eat or you've got a, you know, a certain I type of I just uh, eat. Diet? Just eat. I just eat. No diet. I, like people always say to me, but how do you look like that? Mm -hmm. I generally think it's genes. It's genes. Yeah. Because I know, eat it, It's a like lot. me. I <laughs> eat a lot, but look at me. But you are skinny. I'm skinny. My bones. My bones. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I'm, <in my> <laughs> I'm joking. For real. I'm you know, joking. Like, I'm Even skinny. me, I'm Mabonzo though. Yeah, I'm skinny. Together, but, we are Mabonzo. So what's, what's the problem with us? <laughs> I don't what, know. What's the problem with us? Just, this is how we are. We were Jeez. born to be like this. And some people like this have themselves. I know, you know to be skinny. You see? <laughs> and we're naturally skinny. Exactly. I, I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so in your own opinion, uh, Brooke, how can beauty pigeons contribute uh, to promoting important social causes and issues? I think because it's a it's a platform, like a beauty pageant is a platform. You are talking globally, mm -hmm. you're talking locally. Yeah. And so I think that is the best way to address any issues that you think that is close to your heart because people will listen. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't do anything about it, it's still like in their brains, in mm -hmm. their subconscious. So yeah. it's something that people will listen to. Mm -hmm. I heard you talking about your foundation and whatnot, mm -hmm. but right now, are there any specific charitable causes um, or initiatives, you know, mm -hmm. that you are particularly passionate about and why? Again, my my woman in the informal sector. Yeah. And I also am very involved with a few orphanages. I go there, I, t I deliver food and actually something coming up now for Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. I'm planning on going to an orphanage to do something nice with the kids. Mm -hmm. like On Valentine's Day? Yes. Wow, I like yeah, that. Yeah, sweet. Um, just like bake some cookies mm -hmm. and ice some cookies. Yes. Just to make them feel going with who? something. Myself. Without your boyfriend? No. Maybe. I'd love to accompany you. <laughs> Maybe my boyfriend. Where is your boyfriend? <laughs> He's here in Zimbabwe. Where is Zimbabwe? Harare. Harare. I'm not going to tell you where else because then you'll go find him and kill him. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> we don't have to snatch you I'm from here. I'm joking. I'm kidding as well. <laughs> so, you know, uh, in your opinion, uh, how can beauty pageants uh, like Miss Universe, you know, serve as a platform for promoting social causes and uh, bring out meaningful change? Yeah, I think... Basically, that everyone's going to listen. Um, like you are talking locally and globally, mm -hmm. like yes. I've said. So I think that whatever you feel is on your heart, you must say mm -hmm. on the stage if you can. You obviously don't get a chance like the whole time to speak about yeah. it. But people will listen. And if, if somebody who is listening also feels that in their heart, they're going to do their best to change mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. or to do something about True. it. So it just depends on who's who's on the other side of the, the TV. So um, who has been, uh, I mean, your greatest inspiration in life? And, uh, you know, how have they influenced your your journey? I am... Um, Both personally and professionally. Definitely my parents. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen them basically come from not a lot and growing up to, you know, being, being more than what they were. Mm -hmm. Um, and just being the kind people that they are, you know, mm -hmm. like I've 
always looked up to them. I've always wanted to be like them, the way they are to us. Like, there's just, I can't even explain. Mm-hmm. They're just the best. Yeah. Um, and then somebody else who I think is also a lot of other young girls person who they look up to is Princess Diana. Don't know if you... Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure I you've... That, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So she, her values, I feel, align with mine. Like mm-hmm. she would value every single person that comes her way. She was kind to everyone. She mm-hmm. didn't care about what you look like. She didn't yeah. care about anything. She was just a genuinely kind person. Mm-hmm. And her story, just, you know, coming to Africa, helping so many kids, helping, doing her social responsibility, you know, like she obviously lived a privileged life. Mm-hmm. And then she used that and her power to help other people, mm. which I find truly ins- inspiring because I believe that that's what we should be doing. Yeah. Because, yeah. And uh, what advice do you have for young individuals, you know, young people aspiring to make a difference and pursue their dreams? Mm-hmm. Follow your dreams. Whatever you want to do, go mm-hmm. for it. Mm-hmm. Be, who you, be who you are. Don't try and be anybody else. And oh, there's a lot, like, be active in your community, like when there's, you know, your community is everything. You mm-hmm. must just help where you can, do what you can, and also have fun. Mm-hmm. Life's so short. Yeah. Like, don't be, don't take life too seriously. <laughs> just enjoy. I like that part. <laughs> don't take life too seriously. Serious, yeah. I, I like that. Like, they, you have to sometimes. Yes. But also enjoy, because uh-huh. life is too short. You have to enjoy. Yeah. Like, chop your money, eat your money, do everything that you can. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least they're still alive, otherwise. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So, on a normal day, what do you wake up to? What do you mean, what do I wake up to? Like, like, what do I do? Yes. I go to Pilates, the reformer Pilates. I don't do gym. Okay. It's boring. Mm. I can't do it. Yeah. And then, well, obviously, before I was crowned, I was working at a beauty salon. Mm-hmm. So, every day I would wake up, go to work, come back, go to sleep, eat, go to work, sleep. Does it eat. pay? Like, uh, being in a salon? Does it pay? I think when you, if you own the salon and if you're doing like everything, then yeah. definitely. But I was just, I was working and mm-hmm. managing. Mm-hmm. I wasn't like not earning anything, yeah. but I think, you know, obviously when you hire up, mm-hmm. the more you earn. Oh, That's yes. just how life yes. works. Yes. Yes. So yeah, what I was earning enough to survive. Mm. So is there anything that you're doing right now apart from being Miss Universe? So I'm starting my own clothing line. It's quite exciting. Mm-hmm. That's still still in the going mm-hmm. going through everything. You've been making your cl- the clothes yourself, or you um, just half off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you'll see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I'm working every Thursday at the mm-hmm. beauty salon from eight a.m. to eight p.m. Every so I'm Thursday. doing like a night service, which mm. is quite cool because nobody here does night services. Yeah, yeah. Like in other countries, they work till like nine p.m. Mm-hmm. So doing that and then just my roles and duties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Lots of meetings, meeting people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're not planning on maybe looking for a COS to travel to the UK like everybody else is doing? Uh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> no, not not for the moment. Not for now. Have you maybe one these, day. Have you ever heard of these yeah, yeah, COS? No. Are you, are, you, are you following? Following what? Of, uh, in, what's happening on the, you know... Zim guys are moving to the to the what? UK like nobody's business. Yeah. How? People are moving. But how? What passports? Because it's imp- it's so hard to yeah. go and move. Yeah. But they 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 are looking for those like no COS is a and they're going to work there obviously. Yeah, of course. Almost everyone. What? Almost everyone. Why is. why does everyone want to leave here? I don't know. Maybe they but, have better job opportunities there. Yeah, some uh, some of them because it's hard aids, to get a job. You know, yeah, care work. Yeah, yeah, and and, and oh, yeah. What, what, what's the message to them? You know, people are just moving. What, what do you have to say to them? Home is always home, so if it doesn't go well that side, you can always come home. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand why people are trying to leave because our employment rate is very low. Mm-hmm. There's, I understand, like there's more jobs out there that people can yeah. get, yeah. and I guess that if. That's what they want to do. They're following their dreams, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but if it doesn't go well that side, you can always come home. Mm, nice. Yeah. I, I, I like that. <laughs> so what, um, what are your, your parting remarks? What do you, want, what do you want to say as we conclude this interview? Thank you for having me, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I just want to say to everyone, 
thank you for supporting me, for having my back and just being like when I was at Miss Universe, I felt so much love mm-hmm. and unity and I just felt everyone was celebrating me and my win. And mm-hmm. I just want to thanks, thank everyone for that. And even to the people who didn't, didn't celebrate me. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Abi, thank you. You know, so we celebrate. Baita basa. Baita basa. But so, what's going on in show? Hanzichi. What's going on? When are you coming back? Whenever you want. Whenever I want. Sha, I didn't understand that one. Yeah, I say. I'm usually, I usually get it, but not that. Maybe no. too fast. Or Maybe too towering fast. Okay. too fast. Like, what's going on in? When are you coming back? Whenever. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Mangwana. Mangwana. No. Mm, Tomorrow. Maneru. Maneru. <laughs> tonight. Tonight. Maneru is tonight. Yeah. Ah. I'll come back tonight for second. Oh, for second. Yeah. Oh. I you see. don't want? <laughs> He wants me out of here. But by the way, do you like traditional food? Do I like traditional food? Yes. I love traditional food. Mm-hmm. My favorite food in the whole world, literally, is my sadza. Sadza? Ne nyama ne muriwo. <laughs> Sadza ni nyama ni muriwo. My favorite. I Na, could live on it. Nyama unofarira nyama ipi? Mm. Ah, uh, and this good. Ah, huh? I was good at what? Oh, I thought you said what? <laughs> <laughs> no, you see, this is why I said I don't want you to. No, I like that. <laughs> no. I like that. I I want to teach you some shona words here. Yeah. Okay, go. Yeah, we, we, so I said unofarira nyama ipi. Ipi. So, yeah. What type of meat? Like chicken beef? Pork? Ah, uh, beef. Ration. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sadza. Unofarira, what type of sadza? Remember, we've got... Um, mili. Mili miu. We've got sine munga, you know, sorghum, millet, and what else? Yeah, maize. A maize. Mm-hmm. Maize. Maize. Favorite. Have you ever tried okra? Have you ever tried sadza with lacto? Yes. Several times. Too nice. Too nice? Ah, oh, too nice. Sadza ne mukaka. Ah, oh, the best. With sugar. Well, with sugar. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, what else? Fish? No. You don't like fish? Mm-mm. Not a fan. Not a fan. Why? I like nyama better. Nyama better? Wow. <laughs> so thank you so much, Brooke, for coming. It was a pleasure. Thanks, Ola. You know. Thanks for having me. Okay. <laughs> thank you so, guys, so much, guys, for, for watching uh, the Ola 7 podcast show on the spot. Here I was talking to uh, Brooke, Brooke Jackson. So it's not Brooke Brack. No, I gotta Brooke, say. Brooke. Brooke, Brooke, Brooke Jackson. 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 She says, I don't know why my parents, I can't come up with that name. Pinga. You know, as a not Pinga. <laughs> <laughs> So guys, we'll pick again next time. Oh, Don't forget to subscribe you. to our YouTube channel at DJ All on Seven. Also, my Facebook page at DJ All on Seven. By the way, before you go, Brooke, how can people get in touch with you? What? Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Social media. Anyway. And social media is, is Brooke Brooke Jackson. Yes. On Instagram. On Facebook. For everything. Okay. Yeah. Twitter. That's no, excellent. I'm actually not on Twitter. Okay. You think I must get on? I think so. Just Maybe. to you know. That's where people are now. I know, true. Mm-hmm. The world's changing. Yeah, exactly. X. But TikTok, yeah, X. Mm-hmm. Oh, not even Twitter anymore. I, I, I saw recently that Elon Musk yes. just bought X And videos. Ma- yeah. X videos. He's crazy. You following? He's crazy. He's got a mind of, I don't even know, but that guy is too clever. <laughs> yeah. Hey? X videos. He's crazy. Do you watch adult content? Do I watch? Do you watch adult content? Like... Adult content. Adult content. Like what? Is that what it's called? Like adult content. Like what? Like adult content. <laughs> <laughs> what is adult content? You know, Elon Musk bought X videos. The X videos. I don't know that. I don't even, yeah. It's like a porn hub. Oh, see, I'm too innocent. I don't you know see? any of this. You see? Did, did you watch that? Why? But did you, did you, Why did he buy it? <laughs> Because I'm told that, you know, it's the most paying, like... How is this true, though? Did he really? Yeah. I thought that he was he like... It. He bought it. The X, X, X videos. What do you think about that? It's crazy. He's making money. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's a clever businessman. Yes. So he knows. Yes. But I didn't. That's... That's just too much, right? Mm. Uh, Each to their own. And you asked me if you, if you could join uh, X, right? Uh, Twitter? 
It's a bit uh, tricky these days because uh, you know <laughs> there's a lot of uh, porn going to be these days. But 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 you but you watch porn? No. You know, even occasionally? No, not uh-huh. at all. Uh-huh. No. Why? Not for me. Not for you. Not for me. You want to do it, uh, you know. Nyara rai. Hat. That was Brooke Tawane Kagdala, guys. See you next time. Brooke, thank you so much for coming. We love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. You haven't tasted rice until you taste Auntie Flo's Kilombero rice. It brings out the flavor and taste in every meal. It's priced right as well. $4 for 2 kgs, $10 for 5 kgs, and $100 for 50 kgs. Available at Eastgate Market Shopping Center in Harare and Fidelity Life Center in Bulawayo. Or simply WhatsApp us on the numbers on screen now. Auntie Flo's Kilombero Rice. Delicious, tasty, mouth-watering. They say beauty is skin deep. Well, at Ice and D Beauty Store, we provide skin products specifically tailored to repair any type of skin and blemishes. From moisturizers, sheer butter, knuckle remover, body lotions, spot correctors and a whole lot more. We have stores and representatives right around the globe. Contact any of our representatives nearest to you. For more information, contact Ice and D Glowing Store.